it's Frankie Widows here and I just wanted to do a very quick video, if I can keep it quick, um, about me and about my journey and you know if it inspires other people that are maybe coming to the lash industry um, either now or later in life I really do hope that this will assist you in showing you that if I can do it anyone can do it. So who is Frankie Widows? I'm a lash judge, I'm an educator, I'm a guest speaker, I'm a product developer, I'm a mentor, I'm a brand owner and I'm a working lash artist just to mention a few. So a little bit more about me, I'm 37 years young. The reason I say that is because I actually think I'm only about 23 and I will keep on going with that idea in my head until I have to decide to grow up a little bit. I'm from the United Kingdom. I'm in a sleepy counter of Kent, which is right down the bottom of the United Kingdom where this little pink arrow is. And I've been a lash artist from 2012. I love animals, uh, mostly dogs, because they are just the best creatures out there and they're so funny. And I'm a girl, so of course I love chocolate and I really like helping people, which is one of the reasons why um, I am an educator and a mentor because I just get a lot of satisfaction from sharing my knowledge that I've learned and helping other people that really want to know more about lashes. Um, I hate fish, um, as in fishy fish. Um, I would love to love fish, but my body just rejects it. And I also hate going to the gym. So although I'm a big sort of advocate for exercise and my boyfriend is a bodybuilder, going to the gym is a real ball ache. It's just another thing that you have to do in the day. And it's bloody hard work as well. I have to go, but I really do have a little paddy before I go. And applying makeup, like how many hours of my life must I have wasted putting makeup on over the years? So my favorite days are actually when I'm at home, I don't have to see anyone. Um, my hair's a mess because I've normally been out with the dogs with a cap on or dragged through a hedge backwards and I don't have to wear any makeup because they don't care. So yeah, applying makeup is just one of those things that you're like, oh God, I've got to do that. Um, I'm not actually very clever. I'm not an academic, I'm not stupid. I did okay at school, but I'm never gonna set the world alight with my, um, knowledge of things um but i'm not bad at lashes um it's one of those things that well, one of the few things in my life that i've actually been okay at um but you know what guys i was really really rubbish to start off with so if you're feeling a little bit rubbish don't worry guys there is hope <laughs> So let me talk about me pre-2012, before I was in the lash industry. Um, I had no background in beauty whatsoever, but I am creative. So I love to paint and draw and touch things and make things. And as a kid, I was always drawn all over the wall. So I was obviously always destined to do something creative. Um, in 2002 to 2012, I was actually a police dog handler. So for 10 years, I never actually wanted to be a police officer. My dad said to me, Frankie, why don't you go be a police officer? And I was like, yeah, okay then, because there was nothing else I really wanted to do. Um, so I joined the police and then specialised in the dog section, which was great. I loved working with the dogs. I just didn't like the police force as a whole. And it was one of the reasons why I had to leave because I just couldn't see myself doing it for the rest of my life. Um, so in 2012, while still in the police, I retrained in beauty in all aspects of it. And then I left the police in October 2012 to pursue beauty. And at the bottom here, we've got some lovely pictures of uh, my time in the police. There's me and some colleagues and my dogs that I had and yeah, all bits and pieces. And I really do miss my dogs, but um, luckily I've got my own dog now, my German Shepherd Diesel. Um, would have probably been the best police dog I've ever had. He's just so handler focused and yeah, he's just, he would have been one of the best police dogs that I've had. But then I had him from seven weeks and I've trained him really well. And um, yeah, a lot of the time, if you pick a good one and you train them well, you can actually shape them into whatever you want them to be. Anyway, I'm waffling on about dogs now because I love dogs. So I'm going to move back onto the lashes side of things. So let's talk about my beauty training. So like I said, in 2012, I trained in all assets of beauty and I actually wanted to be a nail technician. Um, part of my training was a lash course. So I did lots of different things. And one of the, the sort of parts of it was lashes. And you know what? The training were really poor back then because the UK industry was so new to lashes. Hence the techniques were very basic. The trainers weren't very good. So, you know, I don't hold a grudge against anything about bad training. We just didn't know back then. And I attended a six hour course. I think I applied six lashes per eye. My lash map was eight in the inner corner, 10 in the middle and 12 over the outer. And we used 0.25s, I think in a C curl, which is quite good. Some companies still training a J curl, but we used a C curl. 
And that was pretty much it. And that day I left with a certificate to start destroying my client's lashes using 0.3s because I thought that 0.25s were just not thick enough for what clients wanted. So I went out and bought 0.3s. Um, I'm not sure you can really get hold of them anymore. And I literally was putting them on every single client I met, like strong lashes, weak lashes, hardly any lashes. Every client got them on and oh my God, I was such a terrible lash artist. I was trashing my client's lashes and as such, they never returned because I did such a bad job on them and who wanted to wear my lashes because I certainly would have done. They were shockingly bad. And just to prove that, here is some lovely pictures of my really shocking lashes. Now, I don't think these are 0.3s. I think I dropped back down to 0.25s by then to try and be good. But you can just see like the ridiculous lengths. It's long inner corners, long outer corners. It droops the eye. They were not close to the eyelid at all. Um, my poor mother on the picture on the right hand side, you know, she has got such tiny, fine, natural lashes. And I was sticking 0.3s on her. Like, seriously overloaded. And then when her lashes were falling out, I was like, Mum, what have you been doing to your lashes? And she was like, I haven't done anything. No, she hadn't. It was me destroying them. And then this little picture on the bottom, on the right-hand side, I was so chuffed with this set that I posted this at around Christmas time. I was like, look at my lashes. They're amazing. Oh, my God, guys. Look at the adhesive use. Look at the stickies. Look at the distance from the lash line. Um... But I thought they were the dog's dangles. And uh, yeah, I just was trashing people's lashes. And to be honest, because I didn't really know what I was doing, I actually didn't really enjoy doing lashes that much. Yes, I was pleased with this set, but it wasn't my passion because I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't feel confident at it. And it was just a treatment that I did every now and then with a few friends and family. But like I said, clients were never really coming back to me because I was so bad at it. So I did try to pursue nails because I was such a bad lash tech and none of my clients returned as such. I focused on nails, but I really struggled because we had, well, we still have so many non-standard salons in our towns that are offering nails for so, so very cheap. I just couldn't compete, you know, with the cost of my products and how long it would take me to do because I was hand filing and doing everything correctly and not causing damage. I couldn't compete with these salons that are just, you know, drilling the natural nail with the drills and things and that. It's a shame, really, because I was actually a really good nail technician. Um, I had a natural flair for it. I'm very creative when it comes to painting, and I did enjoy it, but I just couldn't make my money out of it. And the problem was, on leaving the police, I'd already sold my house, I'd sold my car, um, I'd moved back in with my parents at the age of 30. I was then in debt because I'd spent my money on retraining and all my products, and I had a failing beauty business. And like I said, I was so, so poor. I just had no money coming in. I'd invested it all, and I just wasn't seeing a return on it at all. And it was that my dream to have this sort of change of career for a better life was now looking like this massive mistake. And all these people that had said to me, and they had, you are a fool to leave a good career in the police. It really was looking like that they were, you know, being bright. And that was just like the worst feeling ever. So I had to get myself other jobs because I just didn't have any money. So I managed to get a job as a cleaner, um, a sports coach. I have a background in sports coaching and my mum's a sports coach. So I managed to work with her at one of the private schools that she teaches at. I did leaflet deliveries. I did pet sitting and I did beauty on the side. And the thing is that to be honest, they're all really poorly paid jobs because... At the age of 30, I had no qualifications whatsoever. I was an ex-copper with no qualifications. Who's going to want an ex-copper and someone with no qualifications for a job? I applied for so many jobs and I just didn't even get through the paper sifts because I just didn't have the right qualifications, what they were looking for. I never went to university. I went straight from school to the police. So, yeah, I had nothing under my belt. And the problem was is that I was working 12 to 14 hours days six to seven days a week just to make enough money to live. I was having to live off cheap microwavable meals because I just couldn't afford to go out and do decent shopping, um, like baked beans on toast and just the cheapest food I could get. And all of my money was actually going on my beauty products for my few clients that I have. And the problem is when you do a lot of treatments, you need a lot of products. So I was having to spend a lot of money on the different products because they go out a day and things like that. And do you know what? It just wasn't a good business move for me. Hence, I was having to, to work the other jobs just to be able to make ends meet at the end of the day. But then I had a chance meeting with a guy called Simon Corson. Uh, worthwhile you Googling him. He is one of the UK's leading internet marketers. He shares the stage with people like Richard Branson, um, all the big business people. He's built his business over the years. He's a multi-millionaire and actually um, 
I signed up for a pet sitting agency and he was one of my clients and I remember going to his house and he had a big mansion on the seafront that overlooked the sea and I went to look after his two dogs and he had his Ferrari and Porsche and Range Rover and all of that on the driveway and I was thinking what does this guy do for a living so I asked him and he said you know I teach people how to build their business on the internet and I sort of thought okay and I remember re-approaching him and saying you know I'm just starting out a beauty business do you think this is something that could assist me and he was like yeah absolutely it will assist anyone so we did like a sort of a service swap and for x amount of days house sitting for him I was able to go on one of his three-day internet courses at Heathrow and pretty much learn how to build my business off him I then did reinvest some of my money that I had sort of away and I had taken a loan as well to join one of his uh, mentoring programs that went on for 12 months so I could always have access from him and pretty much over that time I learned how to build my business so guys I'm not a natural business person and I've had to learn this you know I did have to invest into learning this and it's been really hard you know I couldn't even turn a laptop on when I first started and I'm still not the best but I make make do and I've got a good team around me now but you know you do have to invest into business courses of some sort if you want to learn to how to build your business because just to be good at what you do practically is not enough to build your business especially online and interestingly I'm actually in Simon Coulson's book here I'm featured as one of his uh, case studies one of his success stories and I now go back to his events and I speak at them and I tell my story of how I met Simon and how I've built my business and how it's grown and all of that and it's great because I now get to go back and I get to talk to people that were where I was when I felt like a little fish in a big pond in his hall with all these other up and coming entrepreneurs and business people. And it's great to be able to go and share my story and, and just say to them, look, if I can do it, you guys can do it. And yeah, it really, really is rewarding. But yeah, please go and check this guy out because he is, you know, a very, very good businessman. And, you know, he really did help me build my business from nothing to what it is now. So having come away from that course, what did I do next? So I got a website set up. So I did have a very basic free website. But the problem is, is that Google doesn't like free websites. And guys, I'm trying to basic, well, set this down basically as possible. I'm not an expert in things like this. But Google doesn't like free websites, just like we don't like clients that don't want to spend money on lashes. So Google likes good websites with good hosting, like, uh, like working off like WordPress platforms and things like that. So you're never really going to get much success at setting up your own website through very cheap tools okay you need kind of good web designs or you kind of need to know what you're doing so I outsourced this to a guy called Chris who I use in Hungary because if you outsource it abroad it's actually a lot cheaper than getting it done in the UK and he was recommended to me by Simon Coulson and he does also Simon Coulson's website so I got myself a good website I then had my Facebook page set up on my Instagram so I could then link it to my website because you don't always update your website every week but Facebook and Instagram you can do it every day so then people can come from your website to your social media and see what you're doing every single day um I set up my YouTube channel because I remember in my internet course saying that YouTube was such a big marketing tool that you had to be on it so I was like okay I've got to do YouTube which I didn't really want to do but didn't really want to be in front of a camera um, and I joined every lash and nail forum that I could find pretty much on Facebook because I didn't have the money back then to train um, and I didn't really have enough clients to justify getting extra training so I just thought well if I could clean as much information as I can from these forums um, and YouTube didn't really have educational videos back then and people didn't really want to share their information so forums was how I actually learned a lot of the technical stuff around lashes now when it comes to lashes I actually did have a light bulb moment because at that time having left Simon's course I was actually still relatively new at lashes and I was really quite rubbish at them still but I had a set done myself and unknowingly they were express lashes which is where there's no isolation they're just slotted in but you know what they were so uniform they were so neat and I wondered why my lashes didn't look like that because mine just looked like a crazy mesh because I was taught to swipe the extension onto the natural lash and just lay it on there and we used so much glue back then and it was slow curing adhesive that it had no choice for the extension to follow the direction of the natural lash so I thought, why don't I control the direction of the extension rather than letting the natural lash dictate? Quite difficult with a sensitive adhesive that is slow curing. But you know what? I managed to do it and my set improved dramatically. And it was that moment that I was like, do you know what? I could get good at this. And unfortunately, my mum my mum was my model for most of my things that I wanted to do. Um, and I 
I butchered my mum over the years. I've trashed her lashes. I've waxed her eyebrows off. My poor mum. I've I've literally drawn blood when I was threading her. My poor mother. She's been butchered by me. Um, but now she gets really good lashes when she wants them. So you know maybe it's a little bit of a payoff. But yeah, I learned that if I use my common sense, I can actually get quite good at this. If I learn to train myself and just think outside the box and not try to follow everything that I was taught really badly or basically on my lash course. I could get good at this. And actually, although I take a lot of courses, I'm actually very self-taught. The techniques that I come up with on my own, just through using my, my brain and just trying to think if there's a better way in which I can do it. And that's why a lot of my manuals, there's content in there that you won't see anywhere else because I've not been taught it off anybody. I've just come up with it myself and it is the Frankie Widow's way of doing it. So as my lashes got better, so did my client base. Because I had good lashes, I was able to take good pictures of good lashes, and then I got more clients because they were seeing the evidence of my work. I also had a good website, so it was hitting high on the Google rankings. It was linked to my social media, so people were then going from that to social media, seeing my work, and then booking in with me. Um, because of my improved lash skills, I was then able to offer advice on the forums and get recognised for the advice that I gave. And then other techs started asking if I was a trainer um, and if I could do like a video of a technique that I spoke about. Um, and then from there, obviously, I did create my YouTube channel and it went big because back then there was not a lot of people doing, like I said, especially lash uh, videos. People didn't want to share their information really or show what they were doing. It's very insular. And I sort of came into the industry like, hello, you know, I'm not a trainer, but this is how I do something and, you know, have a go. And if you've got a question, come and ask me because I'm a people pleaser. I like to help people. And, it, you know, my channel went massive just because I, there was nobody out there really doing it or offering advice for free so yeah it was like major major how quickly my youtube channel grew pretty much overnight and i was really really busy with lashes uh, because there weren't actually that many technicians doing lashes back then whereas these days a oh lot everybody's doing lashes you know lash courses are so cheap you can go on groupon and get an accredited lash course for 27 uk pounds it's about 30 dollars and we've just got, unfortunately, so many technicians out there just butchering people because their just training is poor. What do you expect for £27? Uh, but back then, there was nobody really doing it. So I had cornered the market. It meant I was able to drop my other jobs and focus on lashing because it was bringing me the money in. Um, I decided to become a trainer because people just kept asking me. I didn't actually want to become a trainer. I was just happy doing lashes. But people kept asking, asking, asking. I thought, you know what? Maybe I should do this. And I thought back to my initial training. I was like, I could do actually better than I was taught. So, yeah, I then sort of went on the journey to get my petals qualification, which we have to have in the UK, which is completely separate to lashing. But we have to go and get that. And then I started looking to like accredit my courses. So writing my content and all the things that I needed to accredit my courses. I set up a forum called Lash Tech Tutorials. Come and check it out. I'll put it in the box underneath. It's a forum um, that's a secret forum on Facebook, which is a bonus group. But the main sort of platform of it is it is a web platform that you log into. It's like a website. And there's loads of information there from like beginners to advanced to volume to how I built my business, you know, saving you money, you know, diagrams, videos that you don't see on YouTube. You know, it's my more advanced videos that I put on there. So it's a real educational platform, like an online ongoing learning zone. And it's like a one off fee. You've got access to it for life. And the great thing is, is you've got the safe secret Facebook group. Now, I know there's a lot of Facebook groups out there, but some of them you do get trolls on them and not everyone's nice. Whereas our group, we've got, I think, over a thousand members now and I don't really promote it it's so great where people make friends and they can post and I'm on it and my team are on it and we just post advice on there help people with their styling it's just a really nice safe place for people to come and chat as well as have access to all the advanced stuff that's on my website it's like sort of like manuals and stuff like it's it's like sort of digital things on there that people can look at but yeah go and check it out it's a great one to come on to and always being kept updated with the lash developments because i go out and do all the research and then i deliver it all to you guys who can just sit at home and just draw in all that information um i also needed a brand because i was going into training i had to develop a brand that i wanted to train with now i did start training with other products like biz lash and sky glue and stuff because it takes a long time to set up your brand and it's really quite expensive as well and i just i sort of i didn't have the money so i was having to budget but you know eventually i got my brand uh which is obviously eyelashexcellence.com and finally because i was busy with lashes and i was getting good at it i actually learned to love lashes but it took a good sort of year and a half two years for me to be really passionate about it because at the start i really wasn't i was a nail girl all the way 
So if you are newer to the industry and you're struggling to find your fat passion guys, don't give up, keep pushing at it because it won't happen. It will be like that light bulb moment after a while. Um, and you'll be really, really pleased that you didn't give up just as I have because I, I wouldn't be where I am today if I'd have given up. And guys, I did give up. There was tweezers that went across the room a lot of times, but we persevered with it and here we are today. Now, it did not happen overnight, guys. It really, really didn't. It's been a hard struggle and I won't lie to you. So from 2012 to 2014, I was working my butt off in multiple jobs. So two years of long hours, long days, I was exhausted. But you know what? I wouldn't give up. Never. I don't have it in me. I'm very determined. I won't just sort of go and roll up in a ball. I'm like, I'll fight this till the very, very death. Um, 2014 I gained my teaching qualification and accredited my first courses so I had been in the industry for two years before I even decided to do that. In 2014 to 2015 I was sourcing my brand, like I said it took about a year to do that and I did invest all of my money into that so I was still ridiculously poor. Um, 2015 I launched the online shop and we had just a few products to start with, we only had like a few glues, a couple of tweezers and some lashes. And then over time, as we, you know, drew in more money, we were able to invest it back into, you know, building the brand, bringing more products into what we are today. And it's something that we'll always continue to do. You know, we never stop with the products. There's always bigger and better out there that we're bringing in all the time. In 2015 to 2016, I started getting invited as a judge. Like that was like, wow, people want me to judge their lashes. Oh my God, a guest speaker. So people wanted me to stand up on the stage and talk about my subject and also an international trainer. So I get to travel the world and teach people, which I love doing, and teach them about something that I love, which is lashes. And when you try and explain it to someone on the outside world that you teach people how to stick bits of plastic onto their lashes, they just don't get it, it's so funny. But the fact that I now have a job where I get to do all of that is just amazing. And overall, 2012 to 2019, guys, I'm still working my butt off, I really am. Um, I always sort of thought that things would calm down by now and I'd be able to have a few more days off and I don't, I don't know whether it's just me or whether it's the industry and the fact that we run an online shop and it never sleeps, there really is never such thing as a day off, even if I'm on holiday I've got the laptop with me because there's just some things that as a boss and you know the company director of Eyelash Excellence I have to oversee and that my team can't always deal with so you never get a day off from it and sometimes it is really really knackering but you know what I could never go back to doing what I did before because this now gives me the freedom to do what I want it's just fabulous so why did I decide to do this hopefully quickish video and share this information because guys just like you I'm a human being I am no different I just love lashes and I love to share that passion with other people that love lashes as well um pedestal I've put that there I hate this when you're somebody that is like myself, that is a judge, is a guest speaker, is a trainer, you know, you have a, a big following on social media, people do tend to put you on a pedestal and it's crazy. Don't get me wrong. It's really, it, it's, I'm really honored to be put on this pedestal. And when I go to events, people are like, oh, I came here just to see you. And oh my God, I'm so amazed to meet you. And I had one lady, she said to me, there's only two people in the world that I've ever wanted to meet. And one is Caesar Milan, the dog trainer. And the other one's you. And I was like, oh my God. So people do put people that are, you know, influential in the industry on such a pedestal. And I really do hate this because although it's nice to be put on that pedestal, I always say, God, I'm just, I am just someone that loves lashes. Yes, I have a an online profile, but I'm no different. I'm no better, I'm no worse. I'm just somebody that loves lashes and I love to share my passion with other people. And if I can help them, why would I not do that? Because it's nice to be nice. Um, so many people said I was a fool. They said I was too old to leave my well-paid job, apparently, and do anything else because I had no qualifications. Guys, you're never too old. You know, if you're watching this and you're thinking, I'm just new into lashes, I've had a career change, or if you're maybe a little bit more mature and people are saying, don't do it, do you know what, stuff them. You go and do it, because you know what, if I can do it, anybody can do it. Don't think it's going to be an easy ride, because if it, it was, everybody would be doing it. You've got to work hard at this, but nothing is ever given to you in your lap. And I think there's a lot of people out there that do have that false illusion that things just fall in your... Bloody hell, they don't. You have to chase it, and you have to chase it every single day. And those that chase it will succeed, and those that don't, they won't. So... 
Guys, it's not easy because like I said, if everybody would be doing it, but if you have the passion, the determination, do you know what? Anyone can do this. They really can. You don't need to be clever and you don't need to be smart. I'm really not. You've just got to be determined. And I've put banoffee pie here in brackets because I'm so stupid at times. I didn't even realise until last year that banoffee pie is to do with it being banana and toffee. Like, how did I not even get that? Another one is that I never could figure out why it's all sunny when you fly on a plane. It's because you fly above the clouds, like, you idiot, Frankie. And I, again, I was always like, oh, the clouds don't ever come out at night. What, Frankie, what clouds don't come out at night? It's because it's dark. You can't see there's no clouds at night. And it wasn't until I was standing out and looking at the sky on a full moon, I could see the big cumulimbus clouds. And I can't believe I'd never seen them before. I'd worked nights for years as a dog handler, for God's sake. Maybe it's because I spent a lot of time in the town. But the fact that I didn't even realise that clouds come out at night, so you can see that I am a bit thick sometimes. I, I'm not ridiculously thick, but it's stupid little things like that that make me wonder how I've done this and how someone is. How do I even get out of bed and tie my shoelaces without, you know, killing myself? So, guys, you don't need to be smart or intelligent. You just need to be determined and have a little bit of savvy about you. Um... And guys, this really hasn't been plain sailing. You know, I've really struggled over the years. There's been times I've been so poor. I've wondered if I've been doing the right thing. I've fallen into pits of depression that I've struggled to get out of, yet you have to put on this brave, smiley face when you really don't feel like it. And we all do portray this illusion that we're this beautiful swan that glides along on the surface. But you know what? Underneath, we are desperately paddling away. And I am one of those people, you know, I'm 37. But I feel like I'm 15. I feel like I haven't got a bloody clue what I'm doing. I literally make it up as I go along. I flap around. And how I've got this far, I don't even know. And I just want to share that with you and say that, guys, if, God, if, if I can do this and I can make a living out of doing this, having no qualifications at the age of 30, do you know what? Anyone can do it. And if you're sitting there thinking you can't do this, yes, you can. And if people are saying to you, you can't do it, you go out there and you bloody prove them wrong that you can do it. So anyway, guys, that's just a very quick insight into me and my story over the last, what, seven years, I think it is. Um, I'd love to hear your comments. If you've got a similar story, then please, please post it below. I always, you know, love to hear it. Post it below. It's great to hear, like I said, other people's stories. And if we can help empower other people to get into the industry and maybe leave a career they're unhappy in, or they just want to do something different, then how amazing is that? So please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Go on, press the button. Go on, press it. Press the button now. Subscribe and go through and check out all of my videos. There's some really old ones on there, by the way. Uh, I'll take them off eventually when I redo them. But, you know, some of them or all of them have really good information on there. Um, don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Frankie Widows. I try to most days post something really informative to help you guys. And Facebook, Frankie Widows Eyelash Excellence, and YouTube, which you're on already. But in case you forgot, it's Frankie Widows Eyelash Excellence. And guys, come and visit us at the Eyelash Excellence shop. Um, we post internationally. We have super fast shipping. I keep my prices low. If you're in the America, so if you're US guys, God, our pound is so poor. So for you guys, our products are so cheap for you because of our declining pound that's just really rubbish. Um, and all of my products are products that I use myself, that I have sourced. I've worked with so many products over the years that if they're rubbish, I know, and I would never bring anything into my shop that was rubbish and risk ruining my reputation overnight that I've spent so many years building. So, guys, if you're looking for good products, come and visit us. Um, visit the website as well, not just the shop where I have loads of training. I've got so many online courses. We've got online, online courses here in the UK. I also travel as well to train, and we just have so much stuff on there. So, guys, I hope you've enjoyed that. Looking forward to seeing your comments, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye-bye! Oh, 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 o